right, Hamza. Thank you for being on Fab TV. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, I saw three episodes, and I really, really like it. It's really fun to watch. Which three? The first three or just somewhere in the middle? The pilot and two. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. You know, what, um, what makes this show different than Grey's Anatomy and Nurse Jackie? What makes it – what makes this – just this more special. It just it's just better. I love the photography too. The cinematography is going. You guys are walking. It's really yeah amazing. yeah. <laughs> those 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 walk and talks. They were uh, they were the bane of everybody's existence for for a while. But uh, um, certainly adds a, a dynamic element to it. Um, what sets us apart is pretty much it's you know it's a medical drama that you know what happens in hospitals on any of these shows it's it's pretty similar there but it's told from a perspective that most audiences aren't used to seeing so the perspective of uh somebody who's been displaced a refugee and he's a muslim character as well and he's trying to make it work and that perspective really hasn't been told on mainstream media uh as much as uh, as much as you know you're run-of-the-mill uh, medical drama. So, uh, so hopefully we're bringing a, a welcome and new fresh twist to an already beloved genre. How did you become a doctor? Um, uh, we, I mean, let's, let, you know, let's, let's, let's say pretend doctor as to not tease my parents too much because I, I didn't do it in real life. But, oh, right. Uh, yeah, your parents must be mad at you. Um, I mean, mad would be would be a stretch, but uh, you know, we had we had so much help with our uh, onset medical consultants. Um, we we were we, we did boot camps for every single medical procedure that you see um, that, that you see our team perform on camera. You know, we'd meet on our days off, and for four or five hours, we would just work on the choreography and the language with either a doctor, a surgeon, or a, a, a nurse on hand to make it look like we know what we're doing. And then, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's like it's like studying for a test. You just make sure that on the day you can do all the right things. And then the day after you forget it immediately. And uh, so if anybody's expecting me to perform any sort of like medical marvels, um, you know, on my days off, like it's not gonna happen. Right. It, when you're watching the show, it's like, we have to root for you. Like, oh man, you, you, you just kept on getting knocked down or attacked or, and, and, and you got your sister, you got, you know, you got all these different elements. Do you have anything in your life that's kind of parallel to, to your character? I mean, I think, I think the thing that a lot of viewers are going to be able to relate to at large is the feeling of trying to find your own feet in, you know, in, in any, in any vocation, in any circumstance there, you know, we've all felt like we're out of place and we have to prove ourselves to some degree. Uh, obviously, this is specific to a, a refugee story. Personally, you know, my family immigrated to Canada. So there was a little bit of that. Um, and then obviously, you know, there's no secret about the trials and tribulations of like trying to become an actor and facing constant rejection at every turn. I mean, that's that's the business, right? I and mean, these these little moments that like, uh, you know, you get that breakthrough or you get the five minutes of somebody telling you you're good enough and giving you the opportunity to really contribute in the way that you want to. So, um, so yeah, I can, I can relate to it in that sense. The, the horrors that Bash has seen, I can't relate to. And I had to defer to uh, the conversations that I had with all the Syrian refugee consultants that, uh, that were made available to me. And I'm very grateful for them to be able to so generously and uh, so, you know, so uh, detail each share those uh, those experiences. Detailly, is that a word? Yeah, it is now. It is, it is today in COVID. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I love the dynamic also with you and Dr. Jed. Dr. Jed has your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, is, um, how is it working with, with him as, uh, and uh, that dynamic, because the dynamic of like, are you, when when you make a look at him like oh he's the one that believes in me he's the only guy that that believes in you from the beginning not well, actually yeah. he didn't and now he does yeah I mean it was just uh, it was just really cool like I'm a I'm a fan right I mean I, I grew up watching the Mummy like hundreds of times I, you know I'm pretty much second and third year university was just Spartacus so. Um, I'm a big fan of, uh, of John Hanna, and uh, when I found out he was going to be a part of the show, there was definitely 
you know, we're all, we're all in our, you know, late twenties, thirties, like on the show. And then here's a veteran actor who comes in, who's been doing the thing for as long as we've all been alive. So we all really look to him, you know, his presence and, and the way he just, it, it was just another, you know, not to, not, not that he didn't see the importance in it, but it was just, it just came so natural to him when he was on, on set. So there was a little bit of that. I think we were all in some way, anytime we had a scene with him, looking for his approval, like subconsciously anyway, as actors. So I think, uh, I think there was a level of confidence that built with us, like the more we could hold, uh, you know, screen space with him, uh, the more we felt like we were doing our job as doctors as well. So I think that translated well. Speaking of approval, so kind of like being a doctor on TV, is there some approval from your parents? <laughs> um, it's like, well, I'm, I'm playing a doctor on TV. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, it's more, I think to finally get the opportunity to play like a, a three-dimensional Muslim character um, and, you know, be able to like flex my acting chops in a way that I haven't gotten to before. And then my parents seeing what I'm capable of in the, um, you know, that, you know, that feels really good. Like uh, they've, they've been, they've been very supportive. Like I've been at this about 10 years now. So they've been, they've been very supportive. Yeah, sure, you get these microaggressions about like, oh, like, are you still considering law school? Or, you know, you could, you know what I mean? There's those like minor things, but that's never gonna go away, right? You know, like. Yeah, yeah. But, when, you're uh, done, when you're done with your little TV show, are you gonna go back to, are you gonna go to law yeah, school? Yeah, you know, like there's, and, and I don't think any amount of success will ever, will ever change that. I think my dad's kind of like really accepted it that this is, you know, like, I, I, I don't really see anything other than, you know, something in the arts, but I think there's a small percentage where just because like we were, I say we, like me and all my siblings, like we were so academically inclined and academically gifted that like she always thought that we would pursue academia on that end. And, and, you know, three out of four ain't bad. Like all my siblings did their job, you know what I mean? So. Um, well, well, I understand because uh, in my family, my brother's an attorney and I'm like this media guy. Right. So it's like, so you get it. So I don't have to explain to you, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Where were you when you got the call that you're the guy? And what were you thinking when you got that call? So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not one who gets like really hyped about things. You know, I try to like, I try my best to, I don't know if it's like a realist or it's a pessimist thing and stuff like that, but I was actually in, I was in South Africa and um, there was just sort of like, you know, I was, I know I was being considered for it. And then like, and then, you know, when other investors came in, um, they said that they wanted a real Syrian guy for it. So although I was teased the role for a bit, then they said that like, all right, cool. We're going to have to like run like the whole gauntlet of auditions across Canada and, and everything like that, because we're they They really wanted to cast a Syrian for it. And they did, they did the whole due process. And at that point, I was I, I was definitely kind of feeling dejected and kind of angry and being just like, oh, I was so close. And then I was like, okay, you know what? If there was a Pakistani role out there and I didn't even get to read for it, I would be cheesed. So like, all right, like fine. So I just I just went uh, I just went went on vacation. I was out there with friends and family in South Africa, and I think my agents called me up uh, and they're just like, oh, you got it. And I was just like, okay, great. This is, this is good news. You sure I got it? Cool. And then they signed it on my behalf because I was out of the country. I went and prayed. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to celebrate at the rap party. <laughs> like once we're done, once I've done all my work for the first season, that's when I'm going to celebrate. And I did. I did. Um, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But when I got the call, I was like, got the opportunity, got the chance, you know, you never know when these things are going to get taken away from you. You never know what's going to happen. So I'm grateful. I'm going to do my job. And then once I've done it, I'll celebrate. So I love your humbleness, if that's a word. Uh, um, well, I'm trying. I'm trying. I, I, have a, I have a very inflated ego, so I'm just trying. Doesn't seem, like it. doesn't seem like it. No, I, 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 could, I, I see what you're saying, because even when you're filming it, they may, not, they, they may even shelve the show. Mm, yeah, you know, like... You never know, like we've been, we've been, um, you know, there were, there's all these things that you think are going to be the break and then they don't end up being that there's the, every time you get a job, you think it's the one. So like, you know, after 10 years of like booking several, the ones that were never the one, 
um, you know, uh, you know, the last show, the last show that I did with Joseph K was a show called This Life that ended up getting nominated for like nine Canadian Screen Awards on its second season. And the day they revealed the nominations, it was canceled the day after that. So, you know, who really knows, you know, what's going to happen. Um, so, uh, so yeah, like you never really know. I, I try my best not to get too excited. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes I fail and I really put all my eggs in that basket and, uh, and, um, gotcha. you know, uh, so, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm grateful for the job. I, I think they made the right choice, but I'm, <laughs> I'm they made the right choice and you're very awesome in the show and I've been telling everyone about it. So great sure. job. Go Carlton. Hey, thanks very much. Huh? <laughs> well, did you go to Carlton? You're not a Carlton graduate, are you? No, 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 no. I just love uh, Ontario. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, go Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> great talking yeah. to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Fernando. Okay. Great job.